In this series of videos, I want to show you how to create your own invoicing system. I'll start off by describing how to create the invoice itself in terms of formatting and structure. Also how to keep a customer database and how to keep a record of invoices. And you'll see here that wherever we have an invoice that's overdue, it appears in red. But if we say it's paid, then the red background disappears. So it's a good way of tracking your invoices. You can also see over here when the invoice was emailed and you've got a link to the invoices as well, so you can view them. Now in other videos, I will also go through these macros that I've created. You've got a macro that will save the invoice as an Excel file, a macro that will save it as a PDF file, a macro that will automatically email the invoice to the customer. A macro that will add the invoice to the record of invoices. And the last macro here will clear the current invoice so that you can start a brand new invoice. And it will also automatically generate the next invoice number for you. If you want to learn how to create this invoice from beginning to end, including all the macros run by these buttons, then follow the link in the description of this video to the playlist that contains all the videos in this series. Okay, in this video, I'm gonna look at creating this button, savers.xlsx. So this is gonna save this invoice sheet in a separate Excel workbook. It's not gonna include the other two sheets, the customer's sheet or the record of invoice sheet. It's gonna do a little bit more than that though. I press it, it's created the invoice, but if I go over to the record of invoice sheet, Here's the line it's created. Let's put the invoice number in, the company number, amount, date issued, date due. But also over here, I've got a link to where the invoice is saved. So if I click on that, it opens up the invoice and you can see it's the only sheet in this workbook. Okay, let's see how we can create this button. So if you've been following along with the other videos in this series, you've already created your invoice, you already have a customer sheet, and you already have a record of invoices sheet. If you want to know how to create these three sheets, then you need to watch the other videos. I've also created two other macros in this series, one to add a record to the record of invoices for each invoice we create, and one to create a new invoice, which basically clears the current invoice in the template. Now we're gonna to have to write some VBA for this macro. So if you're writing VBA macros, it's a good idea to have the developer tab on your ribbon. If you can't see it, right click on one of the other tabs, customize the ribbon, and then you need to tick this option here, click on okay, and the developer tab will appear on your ribbon. On that developer tab, click on the Visual Basic button and that'll open up the Visual Basic Editor. And if you've been following along with the other videos in this series, you already have two macros. If you've not been following along, that's fine. You can go to View, Project Explorer, and you'll need to create a module. We're storing our macros in module one. You'll need to go to Insert Module to create a module. And then I'm gonna create some space for my new macro. And I'm gonna call this sub save invoice as Excel. So this macro has got to save this invoice sheet to a new workbook and then save that workbook to a folder that I specify. And the steps are gonna be copy the invoice sheet to a new workbook. Then delete all the buttons on the worksheet. What do I mean by that? Well, we're gonna have lots of buttons on this worksheet. I don't want those to be included in the invoice that I'm copying over. Then I've got to save the new workbook to a specified folder and then close the workbook. And then 
need to put the details of the invoice in the record of invoices sheet. So those are the basic steps of my macro. Let's see how we can do this. Now, before we get started, we're going to have to declare a whole load of variables. The first one is for the invoice number. Store that as long. The invoice number ends up in the record of invoices. So that needs to be stored somewhere in the macro. So does the customer name for the same reason. Store that as string. The invoice amount needs to be stored and carried over to the record of invoices sheet. I'll store that as currency. So does the date of issue of the invoice. Store that as date. The agreed terms for the invoice, 30 days, 60 days, etc., needs to be also carried over to the record of invoice sheet. I also need to store the path of the folder that I need to save to. I'll store that as a string. I also need to store the file name of the invoice. I need to create a file name for the invoice. And that's going to be made up of the invoice number and the customer name. Now there'll be a couple of other variables that we'll include, but I'll explain those later. And what I'll do is I'll just close down this Project Explorer so we can see our template. And the invoice number needs to refer to range C3. C3 is where our invoice number is stored. It may look like it's in D3. This is a merge cell. If I click that cell, you can see up here in the name box, it's C3. Customer name is the next variable. That's stored in range B10. Over here, this is range B10. The amount is at the bottom of the invoice. That's cell I-41. Date of issue. That's in cell C5. Term. That's in range C6. Now path, it's got to go in quotation marks. I've got my path on my clipboard, so I'll paste it in. You can save it wherever you like, but please include that final backslash at the end of your path. And file name, we're going to generate that. That's going to be a concatenation of the invoice number. So it's going to get that from the invoice number variable. Concatenated with, We'll have a space dash space concatenated with the customer name. Okay, let's do with the next step. A typo there. Copy the invoice sheet to a new workbook. And to do that, very easy. We need to know which sheet to refer to. And if I go to my Project Explorer, I'm going to refer to the code name for the sheet, sheet one. That's the most reliable way of referring to a sheet. I'm going to say sheet one dot copy. Now, if you're wondering what that does, that's literally the same as right clicking on your sheet tab, going to move or copy, create a copy to a new workbook. Now the next step is to get rid of all the buttons on the worksheet. And to do that, I need to declare another variable. I'll call it SHP as shape because VBA considers those buttons and those icons all to be shapes. And I'm going to say for each shape in active sheet dot shapes. Shape delete next shape. So that will loop through all the shapes in the worksheet and delete them. Next, I've got to save the new workbook to a specified folder. Just scroll up a bit. I'm going to say with active workbook. 
So the active workbook will be this new workbook that we've created. And the first thing I want to do is rename the sheet. So it doesn't say invoice template, it just says invoice. So it will be sheet one dot name equals invoice. Then save as. And we're going to use the file name parameter to begin with. File name, colon equals. We're going to save it to the path concatenated with the file name. So don't forget the path I've specified up here. And the file name is the concatenation of the invoice number and the customer name. Now, I also need to specify that I want to save it as a normal Excel file. At the moment, this file is a macro enabled file. It has to be a macro enabled file to store these macros. To convert it to a normal Excel file, you say file format and 51. Now I will leave a link in the description of this video so you can see what codes to use for different file formats. But for now, just take my word for it. Code 51 will save this file as a normal .xlsx file. Finally, we need to close the workbook that I've created and then end with. So I've actually done that as well. Now let's see if the macro works as it is. Let's see if we can save it. So I'll put an invoice number in. Let's say it's 132. Keep the date as it is. Put one item on the invoice. Priced at £99.99. Let's see if the macro works. So I'll play it. Now I've opened up the folder where I should have my Excel file. And here it is, the invoice that I've created. If I double click on it, here is the invoice that's been saved. You can see all the buttons have disappeared, but all other details remain. Okay, I'll close that down. So I'm happy that that part of the macro seems to be working, but I do need to get the details of the macro to be recorded in the record of invoices. I also need to show the path of the file here as a link. Now to do this, I need to be able to work out on the record of invoices sheet, which row is the next available row. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of column A, down to A, 1,048,576, and then use control up arrow key to find the first value and then move down a row. So I'm going to store another variable called next rec, next record as range. And then down here, because next rec refers to an object, I need to set it. I'm going to say set next rec equals now. Let's go back to our project explorer. We want to put it in the record of invoices sheet. We want to put these details in that sheet. And you can see that the code name for that sheet is sheet three. So it's sheet three dot range. And the range I'm referring to is A1048576. And the equivalent of control up arrow key in VBA is dot end Excel up. And then I need to move down one row. So offset one row, no columns. So now I've identified the row that I need to enter these invoice details into. Now in that row in column A, I want to put in the invoice number. You can see that up here in the sheet, column A contains the invoice number. The next column is going to contain the company name. So that's next rec dot offset. I want to stay on the same row, but I want to move across one column. 
equals customer name. Then I can copy this, paste it down here. The next column along needs to contain the amount that's in column C. Next column along is column D. That's date of issue. Next column is date due, which is a calculation. That's going to be date of issue plus the term 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, etc. Then I need to put the link to the invoice in column H. So how do I do that? Well, I have to say sheet three dot hyperlinks dot add. That's my method. Now the anchor parameter is asking for the cell that you're going to put the hyperlink in. And that's next rec dot offset. And it's no rows, seven columns, comma. And I need to use the address parameter. And that's the path that the hyperlink is going to link to. That's going to be path ampersand file name ampersand in quotation marks dot x l s x close quotation marks. And that's the end of the macro, right? Let's see if it actually works. So if I go back to my invoice template, let's change the invoice number 133. I'll add some more stuff here. Let's change the customer. Let's run the macro. Now, if I go to my record of invoice sheet, you can see I've got that invoice listed here together with the link and if i click on the link opens up the invoice i'll close that down so we just need to make a button for that macro now so developer tab insert under full controls click on the button button draw your button choose your macro click on ok to edit the text click into it select the text delete Save as dot xlsx. To format the button, click outside it, right click on it, format control, alignment left, margins, I'm going to say 0.5 on the left margin. I'm going to change its size. So if I go to shape format, 1.5 height and 4.5 in length. The other two buttons have got a little icon on. To get that, I went to insert illustrations icons. I type save in. That button will do. Change its size 0.85. Drag it onto the button. To group it, the icon's already selected. Hold down shift on your keyboard, right click on the button, choose group, group. And then I can drag it around the screen. Okay, let's see if the button works. 199, let's change this. More stuff, seven at 499. Save as XLS, X. And you can see it's appeared there and I've got a link to the invoice. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next video.